Blog Talk Radio. to the Big Scoop with Coop. I'm your host, Coop. And today I actually have on the line, well, my guest actually has been in many movies and actually produced many songs like No One at All and Secret and Lies, where you can actually find on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, Crystal Lang, how you doing today? Great. How are you, Coop? Hey, I'm doing great. Now, CLS, <laughs> um, yes. on this show usually speak about the success of people, how they actually started, and where they are now. But what right. we always do, always on this show, we always start from the beginning. So we're going to oh, do yeah. that now. So, yes. CLS, what motivated you to become, uh, acting, well, pursue an acting career? Well, it's interesting. I think a lot of actors and performers will say, well, I've always been an actor. I've always been a singer. And I think that's true for me too. Um, When I was a little girl, I just, I was always performing. My cousins and I would like set up a stage and props and everything and like choreograph dance moves or write a little script. So I always knew that I wanted to do something related with performance. And um, so, you know, it's, it's funny because I, I've i um, also become a, a college professor, so I, I teach public speaking as well as do oh, my wow. acting stuff. Yeah, so, um, and I call it my day job sometimes, but people say, no, that's your day career. So, um, <laughs> actually, I, I started as a theater major in college, and I found public speaking as well, and to me, they go sort of hand in hand, um, mm-hmm. and when I was working on my college career, I certainly didn't have time to do a whole lot of acting. So I did a little bit of modeling and I viewed my modeling stuff as sort of coming to the camera as a character. Um, And then when I finally graduated, I said, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. I landed a job in LA and I found a fabulous acting coach, Mark McPherson, Studio 24-7. And Um, he actually introduced me to a lot of stuff I didn't know about um, on the administrative side where, you know, obviously you get your headshots and resumes and all this stuff, but certain techniques (laughs) for writing letters for casting directors and all this sort of stuff, and I started getting auditions, and and I I really sort of got into a rhythm of it and um, found this great group in Studio 24-7 where, um, you know, the act, our acting coach, Mark, always says, you know, work begets work. So whether you're working for money or working for free, whatever, that's going to help you work on that 10,000 hours. So the goal is always 10,000 hours. So I'm always just, um, you know, making work, whether it be independent or I'm hired or a student project, and um, really just sort of getting the gumption together to just go for it. So... Um, when I was really little, my mom's friend, uh, Gail, is actually um, Robin Wright Penn, formerly Penn's mother, and we went to the premiere of The Princess Bride, which to this day is like my favorite movie. And so <laughs> knowing somebody like that, I mean, not really knowing her really well, but knowing of her and saying, oh, you know what, somebody's able to be an actress as a living sort of motivated me as well. Wow, very interesting, very interesting, and it's it's really interesting because towards this day, you know, you still like Princess Bride, and that's where it actually, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. the admiration started for you, and to this day, you're still actually into it. I like that. Now, we know how you started. Let's fast forward a few years. Uh Now, Uh Uh what movies or television shows have you actually appeared in? Can you name a few of them? 
Oh, sure. Most of my work is independent, um, stuff that you would not have heard of, either things I've produced or friends have produced or independent projects that I've been hired for. Um, But I actually really wanted to see what a huge set was like. So I worked for a full week, like 14-hour days, on Get Him to the Greek. Um, And it's hilarious to me because my sister, who was not living in the same town as me at the time, called and said, oh, my gosh, I saw the back of your head and get him to the Greek. So even though, (laughs) you know, that's only being an extra, it was a really great experience to um, see what a big set looks like. And right. And um, and it was great because I actually wrote to the assistant director who um, was running the set that day just to say that I really appreciated um, how he ran the set, and he actually wrote back to me. Um, so I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is very supportive. Um, but last summer, uh, my agent actually got me an audition to be a body double for American Horror Story promos, and I got to be a okay. double for a couple of characters for American Horror Story. I don't know if you've seen them, but those posters where there's all those creepy bodies on the wall, I got to... Yes, I have. Yeah, I got to be a couple of the bodies on the wall. So, hey, that's um, cool. Yeah, those those are my big claims to fame. But my, my bigger roles are certainly just... Uh, they're independent. Um, and I think the most success I've had with an independent film was a film called Silence, which I co-created with Mike Garcia. And it was um, a picture at the uh, L.A. Neo-Noir Festival in December of 2012. And then in August of 2013, um, it was screened at the San Diego Indie Festival. So... Um, we got an award for Best Picture, and we and I also got an award for Best Actress in that. And it's a totally silent film um, that we created, and it's pretty cool, and, and it's been pretty well received. And you see a lot of people, they feel that, and here's one thing that I differ from a lot of people. A lot of people mm-hmm. feel that success in movies is if you only make it directly to the big screens. To be truthful, right. some of the best actors and actresses come from independent. And oh, sure. and if you can make it to the San Diego Film Festival in place, mm-hmm. as far as those get nominated or even make an award or receive an award, that's that's really success because when you make it there, you know, you're really mm-hmm. known. So that's yeah. one thing that I really congratulate you on. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's, it's very encouraging. And honestly, I mean, when you're working on any art or craft, if you have a – even a small audience that's appreciative of your work, it gives you, you know, somewhere to go. And frankly, if your audience is mostly other artists, they're going to be more appreciative of your work anyway. That's very true. Very true. And speaking about appreciative of work, now Mm -hmm. which movie did you enjoy having a role in the most? I'd have to say um, the first narrative short that um, I produced with, some friends called It's Never About a Boy. And I had been working for a couple of years in my acting class on a one-woman show, and I I got some feedback from my fellow actors who suggested that I film it. And the original idea was just to film me doing pieces of this uh, one-woman show, maybe create a YouTube channel where you can, like, kind of choose your own adventure, go in whatever order you want. And then mm-hmm. I... Um, I was talking to my director friend, Shane Harrington, who had cast me in one of his projects, and he read the script and loved it so much, he said, let's make this into a short film. So Shane created the screen adaptation, and we made a short. So, I mean, I was kind of playing myself, but sort of a fictionalized version of myself. And it was awesome because we we turned this one woman show into um a short film with like 35 actors so we always joke about (laughs) 35 actor one woman show um but it was really cathartic and really fun um to take little kernels of my own experience and turn it into this narrative short that so many people actually enjoyed working on 
and that has to be one of the best roles in the world because if you can actually play yourself and just put more of a fictional or more of a non-fictional side to it, you know, mm-hmm. that right there is amazing because that seems like you should be really comfortable in that role yes. throughout the whole film. So well, what's that is cool. Well, is it's, it's maybe the most comfortable and least comfortable at the same time because, you know, you're sort of, even though it's not 100% true, even though it's got sort of a spin, so it's not exactly the way it was or whatever, there's a lot of truth there and a lot of vulnerability. So, it, you know, uh, it's, it's received either really well by people who can relate to the story or really poorly by people who are like, that's just nepotism. You're just, you know, navel-gazing and you just... Yeah. You just want attention or whatever. So it's it's really interesting to see people's reactions um, uh, and see how they can relate or not relate. Hey, as long as it comes from the heart, I really believe that everyone will pick up and know it's actually true. So that's one thing I can say about that. Those type of roles are amazing because I have done a role like that before myself. And when you actually mm-hmm. are – playing yourself and you feel comfortable, sometimes you'll forget yeah. you're on the set and you'll just yeah. go straight from the heart. So that's a great thing. Now, um, another question for you. If you could choose uh-huh. any genre of a movie that you could star in, what would it be? And what would it be about? Well, well it's interesting because um, I'd say either, you know, playing a role like The Princess Bride where it's funny and romantic Mm -hmm. and kind of a bit of um, suspense. But I have to say that we're actually taking – it's never about a boy that I just uh, was talking about. My friend Samara Howell and I are working on developing that into a feature-length script. So I'm kind of torn between a Princess Bride kind of role or this role that we're developing now. Um, But – yeah, I love I love to play the princess with a twist, just like Buttercup. So um, most of my roles are kind of that woman who sort of has everything that she ever wanted and needed, sabotages her own happiness in some way, or that happiness is sabotaged for her, and then she works the rest of the movie to try to get that happiness back. <laughs> hey, that'll be cool. That'll definitely yeah. be cool. Now, are there any more movies um, that you have a role in that's coming out this year that we can look forward to? Yes, absolutely. So um, my friend Andrew Tarr and I, uh, well, he actually wrote the script, and it's absolutely brilliant. He's hilarious. And he wrote this role for me, which was a huge compliment. And it's the movie's called Pixie, and it's a short, dark comedy and I play a robot, actually, that this man has ordered, and I malfunction. I don't want to give away too much, but we're going <laughs> to re- release that sometime this year. And we're so blessed to have Larry Thomas. Uh, you may know him as the Soup Nazi from Seinfeld. And yes. um, James, Mor- James Morrison, who you may know from um, uh, mostly from 24 fame, but he's he's done quite mm-hmm. a bit more than that. And they have been gracious enough to do some voiceover work for us for that film. So um, I can tell you that there's a lot of special effects in that film. It's really funny. It's really dark. um, And I I, I play a a robot that malfunctions. So that one should be really good. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you stay tuned for this because um, later on this year when this movie drops, make sure you go get this movie because it seems like (laughs) it's going to be a real cool movie. Make sure you do that. (laughs) Yes. Now, um, CLS, what is your ultimate goal as an actress? Well, my ultimate goal is to keep making projects that people can relate to, can you know, I, I like to make the kinds of projects that either help you deal with something in your own life or on the very opposite end, just give you an escape from your own life. Um, on the more practical side, my goal would be able to make my primary income as an actress. But the right. the wonderful part about 
having that day job and doing the acting career and creating most of my work myself is that I don't have to compromise and do roles that I don't really connect with or don't really love. Not to say that all actors do that, um, but I never have to worry about that. So, you know, there's there's a good and bad side to having my income come primarily from another source. Um, I can always... If I see a role that I don't like, I can always pass it up. And if I see a a role that I love but it doesn't pay very much, I can still take it. Um, So I'm primarily focused on uh, being able to just continue doing my art. But, of course, my availability is a little bit less uh, than somebody who gets to act all the time. So my, my primary goal, practically speaking, would be to be able to just always be acting, always be creating art. Wow. Now, that is amazing. Now, even though that's your primary goal, now, CLS, there's more to you than just acting. Because, like I said <laughs> in the beginning of the show, you actually sing, and you have made music. Yeah. Now, how did you come up with the idea of No One at All and Secret and Lies? How did you come up with that idea? Well, uh, the... The song No One At All is a little bit older, but it's uh, the first music video that I was able to make, and um, and it I, I'm pretty happy with, with that. And actually, it's interesting. I was driving home from acting class, and this was years ago, and there was a guy in acting mm-hmm. class that I had a crush on, and he wasn't really that <laughs> interested, and I just, I was driving away, and I was just watching his truck, like, make a make a right um, onto his street or whatever, and I was driving on past there to go to my house. And um, some of the lyrics from that song just kind of came into my mind. Um, And I ended up going home that night and writing the first draft of the poem that eventually became that song. Um, So, I I mean, I guess I'm a little Taylor Swift in that way. (laughs) A lot of my songs and writing come from either unrequited loves or uh, relationships that I've had. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's certainly working for Taylor Swift. <laughs> that's very true. And it seems like coming from the heart, like I said, you know, that can make, some, sure. that can make the best music and the best acting. Now, what about Absolutely. Secrets and Lies? Well, Secrets and Lies is a different sort of uh, influence because Actually, I was working on a web series, um, which it, the the name of the web series changed so many times, but I believe the name they finally settled on is Strippers and Guns. So, okay. um, <laughs> and it's actually a really cool concept uh, that you know it's it's a, a strip club, and the owner dies and then the strippers end up taking over the strip club and sort of the comedy of errors that happens with these women trying to run this strip club. And it's kind of um, an action uh, sort of guns, as you can imagine, plot, Mm -hmm. but also a comedy at the same time. And it was so much fun to work on that and uh, what ended up happening was they needed a theme song. So almost every actor that was in that web series was also a musician to some degree. So they had all of us writing different music to try to do for uh, the web series. And this was going to be the theme song, um, but we ended up going in a di- different direction for the web series because, like I said, the name changed so many different times. Um, but it started out as the theme song for that web series. And then once I uh, I got the news that it wasn't going to be the theme song, I got a little bit more leeway in what I could do with the song. And I was working with Tito Castro from Tito Castro Productions, and he's really great to work with. And um, he developed these really cool sounds and beats to go with the song. And um, so it ended up being what it is now. And the interesting thing is it's all about sort of um, a lover that has done this person wrong, but it's actually my husband and I <laughs> who are doing the 
the singing on the song, and um, luckily it doesn't apply to our relationship at all. It's totally fiction, <laughs> but it's really fun, and I don't think that I would have come up with something like that if I hadn't had the challenge of that particular web series. Um, and we have a music video for it that uh, Saul Herkus directed that is really fantastic, and it's going to come out later, hopefully in around June, and um, and it looks beautiful. And actually, I'm getting the chance to um, sort of revise and reproduce that song with Christian Davis Stalmecker of Sly Doggy Productions. He just worked with mm-hmm. uh, Little Wayne and Jordan Knight, formerly of uh, New Kids on Black, or I guess they're reuniting now. So right. it's really exciting to work with a producer who does more of that genre. Because Tito is amazing. I love him to death. Um, but Christian actually works in that genre a little more often. So we're sort of revamping that song a little bit to come up to the level that Saul has really made that music video. So that's going to be an exciting project to see too. And I can actually say, because I've heard the song, and the beat uh-huh. really complements that song. Big time. Oh, thank you. So, thank you. Yes, I, I love it. Yes. So um, <laughs> with that being said, Secret and Lies, and if you want to go back to CLS First Music, hey, go to YouTube, check out the No One at All, check out Secret and Lies, see what else CLS have up there, because I guarantee you will love the music. I had to listen to it at least four times. I really like Secret and oh, Lies. I, that is so sweet of you. Yeah, the YouTube channel is just called Crystal Lane Swift um, so if you just uh, go onto YouTube and search C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-L-A-N-E-S-W-I-F-T, then you can find all of those songs and the trailers from all the movies I've been talking about. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, after this show, make sure you go to YouTube and check this out. <laughs> if you want to hear some good music, that's where you go. Seriously. <laughs> um, do you have any more songs that are actually in the works of being released? Uh, yes. So the new version of Secrets and Lies is in the works. Um, And then actually my husband and my uh, wedding video is up on my uh, YouTube, which, I mean, that sounds like such a silly thing, but uh, we had a very theatrical wedding. And there's two songs on that wedding video that um, are original, and we're in the process of doing something more interesting to release those either radio or real music videos. I mean, our wedding video is kind of like a music video, but something that more people would be interested in watching. Um, So those are what are in the work right now. I saw that video um, of your wedding, and Uh I have to ask this question. It's kind of off topic, but where was that church at? That was a humongous church. Oh, yes. That is Hollywood United Methodist Church, and our church is really – it's fantastic. We have – We're right in the center of Hollywood, and it's uh, on Franklin and Highland, which is, uh, you know, basically right in the middle of the city of Hollywood. And we have lots of actors and industry folks who come. And the cool thing about our church, well, one of the cool things, we we have this really old school, you know, um, looking church, but on the beautiful tower has... It has the big red ribbons, which are, you know, the the AIDS awareness ribbons. And we put those on our church as an indication that everybody is welcome at our church. And every year at the Gay Pride Parade in Los Angeles, it's so interesting because our church and a Lutheran church are actually marching in the Gay Pride Parade. And then we have, you know, the opposition like Westboro Baptist Church who come and sort of picket and protest against us walking in the gay pride parade. So it's a really interesting clash of people claiming to be Christian. But uh, maybe that's a whole other show. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and I'm going to bring you back on for that one. I definitely am. (laughs) Yes. Um, Well, let me ask you this. Is it hard to balance, like, family time with producing, writing, acting, singing? Is it hard to balance that life? Well, the simple answer is yes, Um, but I'm so blessed because, like I said, my husband, Rich Ferguson, is um, also, he's he's a poet and a spoken word artist, and um, 
I'm so blessed that he is willing to work with me and I am willing to work with him, of course, and we're able to sort of, you know, some people say you shouldn't mix business and pleasure, and we don't mix all of our business and pleasure. He has his own project. I have my own project. But it's really great that occasionally we can come together. Um, We've written poems together. We've made music together. He's appeared in one of my films, you know. So we, we sort of keep each other you know, abreast of our art and really involved in our art to some degree. And so I think that helps a lot. And at this point, we only have a fur baby, our our beautiful dog. So um, she's, she's pretty cool with, uh, you know, going anywhere and everywhere with us. And, uh, yeah, we just uh, try to keep family time and creative time overlapping, not all the time, but to some degree, and that helps. Hey, that's real cool. Most definitely. <laughs> hey, um, what's the dog's name? Her name is Sadie. She's an 87-pound Bernese Mountain Dog Border Collie mix, and she's in the wedding video, too. She was our ring bearer. Okay, I did see the dog. I was wondering yeah. whose dog that was, yeah. but okay. Yeah. Hey, that's cool. At least you had the whole family in the wedding. <laughs> that's a good mm-hmm. thing. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Now, for the people that's actually listening at home right now, um, CLS, I think a lot of people want to know the answer to this. What mm-hmm. advice would you give any male or female that's trying to step foot in the musical movie industry? You know, I think the first thing really is to do your best to try not to think I'm trying to get my foot in the music and movie industry. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but I think it's really easy for people to just get obsessed with, I have to make it, I have to make it, I have to make it. Um, This particular industry, I think, is, I don't know if it's the very hardest because I haven't been a part of every industry, but I do know, like, as a professor, you, you do A, B, C, D. You know, you get your degree, you write some academic papers, you get them published, you apply for these jobs, you teach some classes, you write a teaching philosophy, and if you do everything you're supposed to do and you do it well, you get rewarded with um, the job that you want and then higher pay, so on and so forth. And I think that most jobs, that's how it works. If you do what you're supposed to do, you will reap the wo- rewards you're supposed to re- you're supposed to reap. Unfortunately, so or, for- or fortunately, depending on the way you look at it, in any creative industry like acting or writing or singing or et cetera, it doesn't work that way sometimes, but very rarely. So I would advise anyone, and I'm probably giving this advice to myself as well, just stop (laughs) thinking about that part. So just keep doing your art, whatever it is, what you have a real passion for. If you wouldn't Mm -hmm. do it for no money, you probably shouldn't do it. And you need to find people that you can trust to give you feedback that's useful and helpful and supportive. And you want to be open to learning, um, but discerning about who you put your art in front of. Because there's you know, there's tons of critics out there who they listen to your poem, they listen to your song, they watch you act, and they just say, that sucks. Well, that's also not very helpful. I mean, even if they're right, it's not very helpful. So it's it's important to, you know, have people who are supportive and be discerning about the feedback that you take in and don't take in. And school is never out for the pros. So, you know, always be working on your art. Um, and don't don't let yourself be forced into compromise with your art. So, I mean, I really think that my acting coach is onto something when he says work begets work. So if you are out there and you're acting or you're out there and you're singing or you're out there and you're writing and you are happy with your work, then you need to keep doing that. Not that anyone's infallible or couldn't learn, but just keep doing it and keep getting better and better and better from doing it and getting those 10,000 hours. See, that's great advice. People out there, make sure you take in what CLS just said. (laughs) And CLS, it's like we're actually out of time now you yeah. on the show. And can you tell everybody where they officially just got their scoop? Right here on the big scoop of Coop. Until next time, people. 
Thank you again, CLS. All right. Thank you. Take care. You're welcome. Have a great day.